Good Friday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about all my cars and trucks and SUVs and motorcycles, the dogs, the kid, life, the attitudes. Friday morning there, appreciate everybody that tunes in my channel and watches me and listens to me and participates. That's so nice of you, appreciate it. And wow, it's Friday morning. Here's the Ram truck. You know what? 3500 This is a Ram 3500 I bought a year ago. Uh, used 2014. Basically 10 year old truck. This is such a great truck. And it drives really nice. And I like what the guy did to it. The wheels and tires. He tuned it and piped it. It's just such a great truck. And I work out of it. And I just really do enjoy my trucks. Just on the truck nut. That's really my true beginnings in life. It's just loving the trucks. It's all about the trucks. And I think if anybody here looks around our property, they'd agree that it seems like the trucks are the more dominant thing that you see than the cars. And that's just because a truck nut. And I just, for me, it just seems like the connection with my trucks has been wholesome in my life. That's always made me feel complete when I have my truck. You gotta have a truck. If you don't have that truck, it's just kind of an empty feeling. So, wow. Overcast, just a little bit of drizzle and rain around here this morning. A little warm, not too warm. Actually, got on. I got my Indian shirt on to match my new Indian rug. Yeah, how about that red Indian shirt? That's gonna match my new <laughs> that I picked up from my Indian selling dealer. Thank you, John. And Motorcycles of Dulles for letting me buy that nice dealer uh, official rug for your dealership which these things cost money, but I got the, uh, like this is the entrance uh, to dealership rug for people coming in to wipe their feet off. But then this is actually the rug that's in the uh, lounge area for you to sit around while your bike's sitting serviced. And yeah, I put my nice cars on them. And right, I hope I don't get them too damaged even though they've already got some spots on them. But wow, let's get the, uh, let's get the dogs in the, in the office, they've already been fighting. It's been a very tumultuous morning already with all the animals here. How many dogs? They're not simple. Those damn two damn wheat and terriers, they were just fighting with each other. I mean, they were just fighting over the food like you can't believe. Very aggravating. Here is the Indian pursuit. If you're watching my channel, um, the daughter followed me down yesterday to get this uh, serviced with the front end shimmy issue. They didn't uh, have that issue when they rode it. And a good friend of mine actually works there, so I'm by no means am I going to call him out because he did do a thorough ride on it. And it's just weird because it's really the low speeds that this happens. It's not the higher speeds. So it's really the 30 to 40 mile an hour speeds on this Indian Pursuit that the front end starts to give you a, a wobble. And I have a, I actually have video of that, which I took. Which was a little nerve-wracking because that, uh, let me get the other light on here for the collection of all the motorcycles. Do I have enough motorcycles? Would you agree that I have enough, enough motorcycles? And if you think about it, I'm saying agree. That is the word of the day. Agree. And we're going to talk about how we all can agree to disagree, right? But I think many, yeah, I agree you have too many motorcycles. You have too many cars. I agree with that. Or some be like, no, there's never enough toys, never enough motorcycles. Isn't that the dang truth? So here on the Indian Pursuit, uh, if you watch my video, you'll instantly agree that I'm not making up a story on how this front end starts shaking violently. That becomes very uh, scary in some aspects. That has to be resolved. So, so many people think it's the front tire. It's hard for me to believe that the front tire is a problem with this um, Indian Pursuit. And what's interesting is last night my daughter said, if this was the first Indian you bought, what would be your perception? I'd be like, eh, not so great. Perception of this first Indian purchase, I'd be like, eh, I don't think Indians really got it like the Harley guys have it. Not just so many people think. But here's the thing. I've owned now, uh, this is my, my third Challenger, basically. I've owned... The first year out challenger, I beat here, flawless. I mean, these motorcycles ride incredible. My 2020 Indian Challenger was an incredible riding motorcycle. Best of all time in so many ways. Um, so now to cross over to the pursuit to have this happen, 
yeah, it's a fluke. It's a fluke, and hopefully it's just a wheel or tire imperfection that's creating that um I need that you know that wobble in the front end at low speeds. It's not at high speeds, it's at high it's a 30 to 40 mile an hour speed. You can watch that on my channel if you want to look at my videos and see the uh, death wobble, the uh the real time video of issues of what uh, you see in these motorcycles. I would hope that video would get a lot of attention for a lot of other people who probably are experiencing the same thing and they don't know what's going on. So anyways, uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Last week, we had the shutdown. We thought on Monday morning, the government would be shut down. And, and then on Tuesday morning, we had the demand conversations. We thought the UAW was demanding, uh, their demands were starting to kind of get met. Then on Wednesday, we had the scared conversations that we live in a society more than ever that is the underlying message is you should be scared for your life and scared for the well-being. And, uh, and yeah, and then on Thursday, I had yesterday the free conversations on how, for some reason, uh, the sitting powers to be and others like to promote things are free. I mean, it's just, so this, this morning, I thought we'll wrap up the week with the agree conversations. And so for me, I mean, off the uh, motorcycle talk here, I think many here could agree that Dodge is making a mistake by abandoning the Dodge Challenger uh, product line here. The body style, the high performance motor, the ice, I think many would say, yeah, Dodge is really kind of cutting it, you know, cutting it loose too early. Why are they, why are they abandoning this ice age really sought after product and why are they doing that because it's all about the green agenda which i think my vehicles that sit in the driveway every day should be a perfect example of what's going on at most car dealerships of the ford f-150 lightning and the ford mustang mach -E here in the back of it where they just sit yeah there's like a hundred day storage 100 days on the lot i think now the ford mustang mach -E. Ford F-150 Lightning, they've cut back production by 40% because of so-called issues. Really? Really, Jim Farley? That's your excuse for the vehicle that you've put in the market that's way overpriced and is a fail? Yeah, the Lightning is a fail. It's watch my channel. It's a fail because it's too expensive. And if you really want to use it for towing trailers, it doesn't work. You cannot tow these trailers with that vehicle and go really on any over-the-road trip. You think I'm lying to you? Watch my video of June of 2022, and I can show you on how that truck couldn't pull that little, that little trailer there more than 80 miles without running out of energy. Yeah, it's pathetic. So it's a fail because I think so many people feel like that is a... Uh, a vehicle you buy that you just have any, too many constraints on you and how to re-energize it. But then here is the win. And this is now what Jim Farley's saying. He's saying the gas, electric, the actual power boost, that is the win. And I will tell you straight up, that is the win. And any All day long, you buy that vehicle. Here's the ball game. It cracks me up on how we live as a society of how people think. So let me get this right. You can go out and buy an $80,000 pickup, but you can't afford to put gas in it. Right? I mean, are you serious? Are you kidding me? You're that broke? You're signing off on a, I mean, for the record, if you put 10 grand down on your $80,000 purchase, um, at the end of the day, it's two grand a month. Truck payment, insurance payment, and you're two grand a month. I mean, uh, hello? Hey, what do you think these payments are in $100,000, $80,000 vehicles? I mean, what do you think? These are $800, $500 a month payments? Are you kidding me? It's beyond believable how much money I pay for these freaking vehicles. So for that vehicle there, you go out and spend hundred grand to save money on gas. How stupid are you? Yeah, you're an idiot. A guy bragging all day long, but he just bought his $100,000 Lightning, but he doesn't buy gas anymore. Wow, I, I got a buddy of mine that picked up a really nice price, buddy, and uh, he pays for gas, but I don't know how long it'll take you to spend $50,000 in gas. Where's that conversation? Just just, just be unbelievable. I think many people could start to agree that we live in an age of stupidity, of mankind's stupidity. We literally do. We, I mean, more than ever in my life, as I progress, I truly believe that the society is getting stupider because if you just look at what's going on around us and the people fall fall for the gig from these um 
really bad politicians. Oh, Bob, we have some of the worst sitting politicians in modern times. Let's get up here and get the, the agree. But we all can agree to disagree. So those that are watching my channel that think that Joe Biden's the coolest guy in the world and has made your, your company the richest company in my green agenda policies, I get it. I mean, I totally get it. Uh, if you're anybody that's getting the rewards from his green agenda policies and radical left views, I can say, yeah, you love Joe Biden because you're making a bloody fortune off of his policies. Just like the Ukraine war. Where is the conversation about how many people are making their millions off of supporting Ukraine war? If you're a company that has military defense contracts, ammunition, whatever it may be, that helps these Ukrainians go die for their, uh, their leader as they fight this guy, Vladimir Putin, who's a total whack job. But, well, he'll, you're going to die before he dies. If you haven't figured that out, then you don't know who this guy is. So, yeah, the latest is, wow, the latest is, and I'm no military expert. I'm no ammunition guy. I'm not into that stuff. That is the way my brain operates. So here's the ballgame. The latest is, and somebody can correct me, but apparently Vladimir now has um, nuclear warhead missile, small, basically small nuclear warfare that he can do small nuclear hits. So it isn't like he's going to take out the state of Virginia, but can he take out the town of Alexandria, Virginia? Yeah. So this guy now is, is literally telling the West, mm -hmm. hello, Joe Biden. Hello, Barack Obama. If you watch my channel, yeah, right. Like those individuals watch my channel. Why would they? Because it would make too much sense for them to realize that they don't have any sense. So for those, Vladimir's giving a heads up that, hey, the West, I'm ready for you, and I just may come visit you. I mean, is anybody listening to this? I mean, how stupid can you be? Do you honestly think that you can go fight a war uh, against another major power in the world and just sit behind the scenes and poke them and poke them and poke them, and nothing eventually is going to show up on your doorstep? I mean, are you kidding me? So you're behind the scenes finagling the war, and eventually the other guy doesn't eventually get sick of your antics and doesn't show up to get more involved. So, I mean, we are living in really just beyond, uh, beyond believable times of how so many think the leaders of our country have a clue to what they're doing, and they don't. And I think many here watching my channel would agree all day long that we are now witnessing the worst administration ever in modern times in this country that is destroying the whole infrastructure of this country. It's beyond believable. Oh, by the way, oh, Joe Biden, he's not raising his hand. He supposedly is going to start building the wall again that Donald Trump did. Now, and here's another thing. Here's Donald Trump. I mean, for me, it's kind of going radical pretty quickly on the front end of the politics. So we'll take a time out on that. Just go back to the car theme that we all can agree on where we are in today's green agenda, electric vehicle, baloney, shimoni, that's beyond believable that the uh, West of West Virginia uh, senator, um, that frickin', I can't think of the guy's name. I know who the hell it is. Manchin? Manchin. Where's Manchin? Has anybody seen this guy Manchin? What happened to him? The guy that a year ago finally bend it, bend it over and gave the IRA Inflation Reduction Act bill to go through. Does anybody remember this stuff? So, uh, it may have been November when Joe Biden pounded his, his fist that he's brought this great new industrialization, government-funded um, economic revolution of the green agenda. I mean, it's just, ah, and you read these articles about all these companies, all these manufacturing companies are setting up shop in Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, and I guess what, North Carolina or South Carolina, and they're all pounding their fists on how they're going to build these major factories and how everybody's going to come running in droves to come work at these factories and how the consumers are going to come running in droves to buy all these electric vehicles to um, support this electric vehicle infrastructure that's supposed to overtake the Ice Age. But yet here's Rivian. Rivian is in dire straits in so many ways. Rivian is just struggling along to try to make it work. 
Here, as I just said, Jim Farley has cut back uh, production by 40 plus percent on the F-150 uh, Lightning truck. Uh, the Mach-E, you don't even hear about that. I mean, Jim Farley has taken a total reversal. Uh, it's all about the electric truck, and now it's all about the gas engine with electric motor attached to it. I mean, so what's the message, underlying message? Here's Tesla that is being overtaken by BYD, the Chinese. I mean, it's just, wow. I mean, and, and the Ice Age is being kicked to the curb. But yet that's what the consumers want. The consumer still wants the Ice Age vehicle. They don't want the EV vehicle. The consumer would like to have more of control of their destiny of where they go with options of how they get there. But these whack jobs like Pete Budapeg and freaking uh, all the other AOC, you know, just all these radical green agenda people, and I can't even name them all because there's just too much of a list of them, that who's the Secretary of Energy? I mean, she laughs all the time, like Kamala Harris, that when you bring up a question about the infrastructure of EV charging and the cars and, she, and then the fuel prices, she just laughs. She just laughs. These are demented individuals. I mean, they sincerely are. I mean, do you have somebody ask you a question and then you're in front of everybody and you, ha, 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 ha. You're just like, what, 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 what are you laughing at? I mean, is that how you overcome the objection to the people in the room that question your authority of what makes sense? You just start laughing? Yeah, that's the Kamala Harris way. Yeah, right. Hey, you watch my video, Kamala? Maybe you get a few lessons in life. Uh, no, I can't go down that path on that one. But hey, here's the thing. For us, we all are witnessing more than ever the UAW that's not happy. Uh, we're witnessing that the banks, uh, in so many ways, aren't happy because of what the Fed's doing. We're witnessing more than ever now the car dealerships, the motorcycle dealerships, we're, the housing market. I mean, we're witnessing more than ever the unhappiness that's starting to prevail from this administration's policies and guidelines. Because we're seeing the rates. I mean, this just 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 think this through. You have the powers to be that are supposedly raising interest rates to bring down the price of things, but it's not happening. It is not happening. Can anybody here please shout out my channel and say that ninety five thousand dollar GMC truck I just bought? Um, it wasn't 95, it was 75. They took 20 grand off because I was having to sign off on a 12% interest loan. I wouldn't do it, so they took 20 grand off. Um, hey, I went down to the motorcycle dealership and that Triumph Rocket, this is no lie, the Triumph Rocket, if you watched my video yesterday, it's at my motorcycle dealership, saying, ah, do I give up some Indians for some Triumphs? Eh, I've owned some Triumphs. And I'm just I'm just taken back on how in the January pre-pandemic 2020, I was at that dealership riding the Rock Triumph Rocket 3 R and the, the Triumph Rocket uh, GT. So I rode both bikes. One's more a little bit of a touring, more is more of the sport style bike. And I just walked away not feeling the excitement because that bike would never bust loose for me. It just wouldn't do it. I mean, I'm not lying. I'm used to driving Hellcats. I'm used to driving 800 horsepower cars. I've got some pretty decent, powerful motorcycles. So I was so looking to get that thing just to snap it where I'm, I'm literally wanting to scream for the fear of life. Am I going to live because of the incredible power that thing has? It wouldn't do it. There's so many controls on that motorcycle that don't let you just bust loose that borderline car engine in a motorcycle. I couldn't get the thrill out of that bike. And maybe I just, maybe there's a mode on there I didn't know about. I mean, I rode the different bikes. I spent a lot of time on them. It was a cold day as well. And I just tried to get that inertia, that thing just like, you're just hanging on like you're Superman. I couldn't get to do it. So I literally walked away from that thing like, eh, this thing just doesn't, Give me what I thought I would get out of that big badass motor, that thing. Here's the point. For me, 2020, January, the Rocket uh, R was like 20 grand. The Rocket GT, which is the touring bike more, it has a more of a rear passenger seat, rear sissy bar, foot controls are different, has a front different 
a um, little more of a windscreen, has different angled handlebars. So your old body posture, posture is more of you riding back, like you're riding your Harley, versus the Rocket R is more you've got the CB650. You know, you're more in that kind of more dominant over the bars, barely, you know, kind of look as you blast on the road. And so the GT was like 21 grand. Yesterday at the dealership, those bikes now are $26,000. So those motorcycles are in are close to six, you know, the one bike is basically six grand more in three years. So for the Triumph company, they have increased the price by two grand a year in so many ways over the last three years. Wow. Wow. I mean, this is incredible inflation. We're in, and you get these people on the media machine that start talking about the inflation and the numbers, and eh, it's not really that bad. Are you kidding me? Have you seen the prices of houses? $350,000 homes are now $500,000 homes. I mean, you know these. These are stories. These are redundant stories. But I think we all can agree that it's out of control. We totally have people, powers to be, that I just mentioned, that their theory is, I'm going to raise the interest rates through the roof, the highest in basically a quarter of a century. You're talking 22 years plus now of interest rates now on homes at 8% plus. That's with good credit. That's with the good credit. We're not talking about the guy who doesn't have great credit. Yeah, have you, have you heard those stories on a house? The whole point is, the raising the rates has not changed anything. It's made it worse. So this idiot Powell and the idiots to be elected by this guy named Joe Biden to run our governing you know, bodies to help manage the monies of this country, these guys are bad. These are bad individuals. But yet you're going to argue with the person that votes for these people in the office and they just won't agree that they made a mistake. And that's the challenge in life is more than ever. Can you agree that you're wrong? I mean, more than ever, more than ever. And that's what's so bad about where we are in today's society more than ever is that we have arguments among ourselves that you're fighting for this guy, Joe Biden, his policies. And once again, I get it. If you're the guy getting reaping the rewards for all of his policies, I get that all day long. That that person's going to be like, this is the biggest, you know, deal for me in my lifetime, my company, and I'm making money hand over fist out of this guy. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 I need some coffee. Yeah, right. So, agree. Can we all agree that the union's going to run the big three into the ground? I mean, you just have to use common sense. I thought to myself this morning, one thing that's back on the screen is this freaking college education. And for me... It's incredible how I went through school and what just the basics of life that drove me to where I am today in my success. And I was never sold in the fact that I had to go to college to be successful in my life. But yet so many have been taught that if you don't go to college, you're going to be a failure. And it's so sad. I, I just so think that if you're in for uh, you are going to be an IT guy, cybersecurity, uh, vet tech, doctor, lawyer, uh, you want the science degree, engineering degree. I get all that. You, you really need to go to college. Absolutely. You're going to have to go for those things. But if you're the person that doesn't really know that's exactly what you want to be, and that really isn't per se that what you want to be, but there's so many other jobs and positions in life, and that's what cracks me up. I have friends that went to college that are car salespeople. I have friends who went to college and ended up being a UPS driver. I have friends at college that ended up being a guy that just does handyman work and works on houses. I mean, so, it, and I get it. It's the college experience. I'm not here by any means saying that college is not a good thing. What I'm saying to you is for me as an individual in life, it's just incredible how I came out of high school. You know what was my driving force of me? I couldn't wait to go to work to make money to be able to buy something for the car I owned or the truck I owned. I, my driving factor was I wanted to be able to make more money to have a nicer vehicle. I mean, that was just the basics of me, of where I was going in my very true beginnings of getting out of high school and my, my goals and my um, determination to go to work every day and not miss work. I, didn't, I went to work every day. I didn't stay home from work one day and felt going to work. 
That's not who I am. But my main driving goal was just the basic things in life. Hey, I went to the gym. I lifted. I exercised. I went out with my friends. We went out to the clubs. We had fun. Went to the car races. Went to the hockey game, football game. I mean, we did all these things. But also, I had to go to work. And I had to be disciplined to stay to go to work. But just the basics of me wanting to make more money to eventually be able to have a nicer car. It's like this right here. We realize or not, this is my... Toyota Super GTR, or GT, whatever you want to call it. The Toyota Super, I always wanted Toyota Super when I was growing up. Always. And over here, I actually have a picture of it here in my office. Right here, I'll show it to you. Right here. So here, here is actually what I actually hear up until uh, recently. I get sold it. And in some ways, I think I should have bought the BMW, but I'm a Toyota guy. I wanted the Toyota Super from back in high school. Out of high school. And I was jealous of those that had them. I mean, I saw those people like, wow, man, you know, you know how that is in life. You're like, wow, I wish I had that. And so it took me a long time to eventually justify and get one. But that was just the, the, the message here is my true beginnings were just the basics of life, of going to work, taking care of myself, well, respecting others, and having relationships with friends and having God in my life. I mean, just all the basic things. And I think so many around us can so agree that, boy, oh, boy, where is the basics of where we all really came from? And yet today, this constant social media machine is just brainwashing so many to look at life and expect things that just make no sense. That's why I was talking about the free conversations. That's why this past week I talked about the shutdown conversations. I talked about... The demand conversations. I talked about the scared conversation. Because these are so many things that are going on in our society more than ever that just takes away the basics of our well-being of mankind to do what we're supposed to do. And, and wow, we live in a society more than ever where people want to see a socialist country. And they don't like capitalism. And all this goes on and on and on. I mean, it gets very heavy, very deep. So back to the... To the UAW, I mean, do, do most here agree that if the UAW really does get the demands of these higher wages, that all of us are just going to pay even more for vehicles? I mean, but are you? I mean, where where is where does it stop? Where do people eventually just look around and just say, I just don't agree with what's going on, and I'm out. I'm just out. I'm just not going to continue to participate in buying this overpriced stuff and in some ways overpaid individuals and and just I'm, I'm taking a time out i mean does that start to prevail more than ever so many are saying that right now it's starting to happen that more and more people are starting to pull back yep but then you read a whole other article that people aren't pulling back wow so here's the thing with, with what's going on now that i think a lot of people could agree donald trump is in new york and here's the thing I am not a person here promoting Donald Trump. I'm not here a person to undermine Joe Biden. I mean, that's not really the message. The message is, hey, do you see what I see? Do you understand what I see? And once again, I think there's a lot of people out there that love Joe Biden. There's no doubt in my mind. Because of his policies and guidelines, they cater to the way they think and the basics of their foundations of what they think is right versus wrong. I mean, that's what we deal with. That's where we come to disagreement. That's why Kevin McCarthy has been um, walked out the front door of the Capitol because of they can't agree that Kevin McCarthy was doing the right thing for the conservative Republican Party. That's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. But here's the thing. Here we are in New York City. Donald Trump's being called out for um, over raiding his businesses and whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. I just think, oh, my gosh, this is incredible how we have the media machine so fixated this guy, Donald Trump. While you have Vladimir Putin um, in a major war that we're involved in. And we have the illegal immigration as it's as borderline in my views. At the biggest challenge in modern times, we've got the fentanyl, you know, abuse. We've got the 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 gangs. We have so many other things that are going on that have such more of a catastrophic value and challenge of the well-being to the infrastructure of society, this country. And you've got you've got the media machine 
just like pit bulls on this guy, Donald Trump. When Why aren't they ch ch chasing the drug cartel? Why aren't they chasing the CCP that's undermining the our country more than ever? Why aren't they chasing the individuals that took advantage of all the uh, payroll protection that billions of dollars was undermined from individuals for lying and taking monies from the government that weren't used the way they're supposed to be used. Um, why aren't the, why isn't the um, media machine more focused on the well-being of the inner cities of how we can try to salvage these inner cities? Now D.C. is at the highest rate of crime, really, probably, maybe, ever, 38% increase in crime, D.C. is borderline starting to turn into the really, which we know is the Chicago, the L.A., uh, the Philadelphia. I mean, here is the capital of the world in so many ways, the capital of our country. And now the sitting powers to be have undermined the law and and we're witnessing a lawless society more than ever. Where Why is the media more focused on that? That we have district attorneys, we have politicians, we have the, in so many ways, the criminals running the, uh, the law more than ever. The criminals more than ever are getting away with, and that's what cracks me up, where people say, well, the crime is down. Crime isn't down. It's just police officers don't enforce the crime anymore because they can't. They don't, you know, don't get me wrong. Police still have criminal activities. Police still arrest people. But it's different levels of crime that's not being reported like it used to, which is ratchet. It's just like you drive down the road. You're driving around the road, your car, and it posts it's even 65. And everybody's going by you at 70, 75. What are you going to do? I mean, for most people, you're going to ratchet it up to 70, 75. Well, it's so different. If you're the criminal person and you witness people now can go to the store and steal $1,000 worth of, you know, $9.99 worth of merchandise and not have any recourse against you, then you're going to start to participate in that. That's all the underlying message is that's ruining this country. It's the underlying message. Like yesterday, the free, free. People are being told, I guess, in other countries that you go to America and you live for free. You're going to be taken care of for free. And what I think they think more of is that you're going to get free health care, free education, which you do. I mean, you do get public school education. Um if you go to the Northern Virginia Community College or if you go to community college, you can get it at a discounted rate. If you have low wages, you can get assistance. So there's a lot of things that are, in some ways, factual on that. But you need to be a legal citizen. So, but the underlying message is you don't have to be because you can just go there and they'll just take care of you. Yeah, who's taking care of these people? Wow, just incredible. And I think that most here at Watch My Channel that watch me on a regular basis agree that what we're witnessing in front of us more than ever, but who's going to change it? Who's going who's to be the person? What powers to be are going to get us to reverse where we are now more than ever, where it just doesn't seem to be going in a better direction? Does anybody here really think that? I mean, I would love to hear the comments from other people. I just like to hear people's perspectives. I mean, does anybody here feel that in the last three years under this new administration that you're living in better times? I mean, do you really feel that way? You know, it's incredible, too. You have no idea how many friends I have. And you keep in mind, politics divides people. But I have so many people I know because I'm such an outdoor person that travels amongst. And I've run into people years ago, and they would call me a Trump guy. And I'm like, what, what does that mean? Why am I a Trump guy? I mean, because I... Voted for Donald Trump and now brainwashed and everything he does. He's the god of the poly. But that's the way these people are told things. And I just remember so well of during the election of 2020 of those people, you know, in some ways mocking me and making fun of me of being a Trump supporter and how Joe Biden was the better choice. Wow. Wow. And I think where we are in today's society, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of variables to the pandemic and the world economics, I get all that. But at the same time, the underlying message from this sitting president administration is is just so more lackadaisical 
of a society we live in more than ever that's promoting just that do you have a value? I mean, more than ever, do you have a value where it's a separation of the races, which we're witnessing that more than ever as people are being taught because you look one way versus the other, what's your value? Wow. I mean, wow. It gets deep and heavy, and I get all that. But at the same time, I was talking earlier about how here's Donald Trump that the beginning of the conversation was. Here's Donald Trump. And Donald Trump has said this. He said, when they're done coming after me, they're coming after you. Which, you know, that's okay. All right. Uh, well, here's Elon Musk that the security SEC, Security Exchange Commission, is now really getting very uh, aggressive with, with Elon Musk. Because they're saying or finding, I guess, um, transactions of him buying Twitter stock. Or, and I'm not really, I didn't read into a lot of this. So some of you may have more knowledge of this than me. And hey, share it on my channel. But what's going on right now? SEC has subpoenaed basically Elon Musk to come to court. Or to come to whatever you want to say, to hearings. And they're wanting to drill him on this Twitter X transactions and how he bought it. So what's the underlying message? I mean, come on, what what do you think's going on? I mean, my my thoughts are that the SEC is going to try to maybe take away the Twitter transaction. I mean, I don't even know if that's possible. Is it going to be the fines? What is going on? I think a lot of people know that Elon Musk has been more vocal than ever in his old his whole lifetime. A lot of uh, Tesla people hate his guts now because a lot of Tesla people are more liberal, more green agenda people. They see not a lot of Musk who's in so much all about that. And he's more about being a smart guy and knows how to put money in his pocket by riding off agendas. I mean, he wrote off the, the, he's riding off the green agenda big time. He's making a lot of money. So here's the thing. So now the SEC, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to really silence Twitter? Are they really trying to undermine Elon Musk? I mean, I really believe that Elon Musk is now the next punching bag from Donald Trump. I really think that in Elon Musk, he's the type of guy that he has that type of borderline Donald Trump personality and attitude. So he's going to become the punching bag. Will Elon Musk be able to resist the, the comments? And that was Donald Trump's failures was if he would just shut the hell up, he probably would have been reelected. In so many ways, if Donald Trump just didn't play the game of going off on others that went off on him and just ignored him, could have made the difference. I mean, there's just so many things I think that if Trump would have done something different, you don't know but it gets heavy and deep. I get all that. The media machine, the corruption of the media is beyond believable of where we are. It's beyond believable. It's so bad. So for Elon Musk, I think this is the next guy. And then does Twitter, I mean, sincerely, does Twitter get shut down? I mean, this sounds radical, but you have so many people that Elon Musk let go at Twitter that pissed them off just to be point blank. Yeah, I mean, Elon Musk let go of a lot of high ranking and thousands and thousands of people that just hate his guts and would love to undermine him and make him pay dearly for his actions and, I mean, sure, so, I mean, that, you know, it's the hate, unfortunately, is the hate more prevalent today than ever in modern times? I mean, is it? Is the underlying constant rhetoric of what we witness just driving the hate? And here's the dangerous point. The media machine, in my eyes, in so many ways, created the emotions that created the January 6th event. And I think, wow. If the media machine is, you know, right now poking you in the eye, poking the eye. And for those that don't agree by this, the policies and administration, do they poke you in the eye enough that next year you get involved in doing things that end up deliberately um, creating havoc in your life? And it's all really a, a grand you know, plan of the media machine and the undermining of uh, of you and the powers to be know how to push the right buttons to get you to do things that will present you being the the, the bad person. And that's what's going on more than ever. I think more than ever, we're in a society 
where the person has good intentions in the end it's called out and they're looked at as a bad guy. We witnessed this and just and under criminal under just criminal acts of individuals just trying to protect themselves that in the end are the problem and the bad guy is the good guy. Just beyond believable. Wow. All right, everybody, I think I'm going to kind of wrap it up with that. Yeah, do I sell the, the Indians and get something else? You know what I really want? I think I'm going to go back to a Honda Goldwing. Honda Goldwing's going to be bringing out a matte gray um, Goldwing, the Tour Edition, not the uh, not the non-Tour. It's the Honda Goldwing Tour Edition, which has rear top case on it. But, you know, I mean, the Honda Goldwing is such a great product. It really is. But the problem is it just doesn't have that same flair to it as a Harley does. I mean, and like this morning, I should have really shown you how on the one Harley, you get on up, throw your leg over it, and you start it up, and it just radiates that badass V-twin, just naturally aspirated, good old ice engine, exhaust note. It is so badass. Talking to my daughter's Lowrider ST, uh, when I move the bikes around, and it's just so cool. And then I start up my Indian Challenger, and it's just so lame because it has that funky Polaris, you know, ching, 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 broom, broom, and, you know, it's just such a lame sounding motor versus the Hurley V-Twin motor. When you start that up, it's just night and day. And that's where the, you go to the Honda Goldwing, you go to the Japanese bikes, it, it, you just don't get that same just incredible, like getting into my Hellcat and starting that car up versus starting up my power boost Ford truck. You know, I mean, it's just night and day. So I think we can all agree that good old ICE engine, it just radiates the, the muscle and the fun that we all just so much love and are addicted to. So uh, anyways, I'm going to end it with that. So everybody appreciate everybody watch my channel and continue to support, share the channel. And it's Friday, you know, I, I, I need to ride that Indian Pursuit back down to the dealership. You know, but part of me is like, Jesus Christ, you know, it's not really comforting knowing there's something not right in that front end. So, I mean, if you're going down the highway at 70 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour, you're like, I sure hope there isn't something else going on here. One person said maybe you're uh, the top steering, uh, maybe your handlebars aren't tightened down. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the headset or something. Somebody mentioned it on my channel. One of my subscribers, he said, I said, yeah, that's a good point. I need to tell a dealership to check the front fork um, torques and handlebars and everything else. So, anyways, thanks again. God bless. Stay safe. Have a great day. And what video do you see us doing today? The kid so bad wants that breakout. Do I do it? <laughs> Have a great day.